we move on a little bit here. When it comes to your 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 method, you have used um, you have got some prizes for cleometric uh, things, but you use um, all kinds of methods. Right. So for for our scientific audience, if you could <laughs> elaborate a little bit on you know how you uh, how you would develop uh, this this research and particularly the, the use of theory. And if I understand you right, you are um, you you really take a starting point often in theory. Right. So I think that. <clears throat> Uh, that you're a more effective economic historian if you bring um, some simple even economic theory to bear on your problems. And the theory that I've always found uh, most useful is the theory of imperfect information. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's the idea that whenever people engage in a transaction, there's some kind of incomplete information, uh, either about the nature of the product or the good or the uh, whatever it is we're mm. transacting about or about our future behavior. And these problems have to be solved in order for, uh, for transactions to, to occur. Uh, and in different societies, in different times and places, people have solved these things differently. And we really learn a lot by looking at the repertoire of solutions that people have developed over time. But if we really want to learn about these things, we have mm -hmm. to be eclectic in our methods. Uh, mm, so yeah, it, that's a key message for yeah. you, right? That it's not one size fits all. It's not uh, sort of going methodologically, just uh, thrashing over a problem. But it's more trying to un understand the dynamics in different ways. Right. Yeah. Because if you <coughs> restrict it, so quantitative methods, uh, regressions, mm -hmm. uh, statistical techniques are of all kinds are crucially important. But if we restricted ourselves to the range of problems for which there is appropriate data for mm -hmm. such methods, we would be restricting ourselves to a, a relatively narrow range of, of problems. Yeah. And so we use them whenever we can, but, but sometimes we have fragmentary data. And if, as long as we're thinking about that fragmentary data, what we might call anecdotes, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, as long as we're thinking about it, with a with us with us in a systematic way with 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 theory uh, sort of informing our questions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can actually form testable predictions and see if they're borne out in the anecdotal evidence as well. So when yeah. I worked on banks, for example, <laughs> mm -hmm. there was no way I could really test some of these theories about how this insider lending worked mm -hmm. uh, statistically, but you form te you form hypotheses. From, from theory, and then see if they're borne out yeah. in practice, and then if they're not, then you go back and you think and you think and you think. But if they are, you have to think and think and think too, because mm -hmm. you don't want to be too easily convinced of the the validity yeah. of your own ideas. Uh, I, I, I like. Uh, I think that's very important in your. In, in, if I read a little bit about your work here, that you use theory really as an instrument to. Uh, to understand the world, right? right? right. <clears throat> it's not the lamppost problem, but people often look uh, uh, under the key, for the keys under the lamppost, <laughs> no, right? yeah. uh, because where the data is, right? right? But uh, but you you try to look outside right. <laughs> that light, right? But but not in the blind. But you use some theory to to uh, take you there. Right? That's right. And that, that, I think that's uh, this combination. I think theory and trying to, and multi methods in a sense. Right. Uh, it, it seems. Uh, very, very important. Thank you. 